Hey. Ooh. 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 Dallas, Texas. What we repping? Uh-huh. What is East St. Louis. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm done. You always gonna make sure the ref is hooked. Man, we coming <laughs> in with the freestyle. Fellas, what's up, man? What's, what's good? good? What's good? It's great. good. What's Whiskey good? Conversation what's Podcast. We are assembled again. Hey. You know how we do, man. We toast. That's how we start off every podcast. Oh. So we cheers. Oh, what are we drinking? Let's go. Wow, wow, wow. Happy wow. Monday. Talk, Happy, talk, Monday talk, fellas. Happy Monday, fellas. Happy Monday. Salute. 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 And you heard it, Balcones Ooh, is our wee. official whiskey like sponsor face. for Ooh. this episode. Again, we official. enjoyed it so much that last yeah, time we time. had to bring them back. Official. So shout out to Balcones, man. We definitely appreciate you. Shout out to the rep, man. Guys, how was your weekend? What weekend? Okay. No weekend? You had no weekend? It went by fast, but I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. sat on laid on the couch all day. I okay. watched uh Reminisce through my favorite role models, David Ruffin and Ike Turner. Good, bro, <laughs> this dude, let me tell you. He said favorite, dude, said favorite role model. This dude put up a post, right? And actually did a poll of who's the better man, David Ruffin. Uh, no, I no, did. I, did, I didn't say who's the better okay, man. Okay, explain yourself. I said who whose role was played the best. Okay. Because you had said. Leon That's that played said. David Ruffin. Okay. And then you had uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburne play Ike Turner. <laughs> Me personally, this is true. I think Lawrence Fishburne did, he should have gotten an Oscar <laughs> for the way he played Ike Turner. For beating, I, for beating somebody? I, but Ike Turner was played just amazing. You know? That accent, like... That was true. All of it. Yeah. It's a All of it. Listen. Now, David Ruffin is, is bar none. David Ruffin is an icon. <laughs> icon. <laughs> but the way he played Ike Turner was fantastic. Was <laughs> Listen. Not a good one. The views <laughs> of Brother Calvin. Who told you does not to be this person right now? So David or Ruffin, reflect. not an icon. So y'all don't be saying ain't nobody coming to see you. I, hey, David, I David, David, hey, David Ruffin went hard. <laughs> but Ike Turner. Come on, bro. That's where we got to draw the line. You like Ike Turner? You please clarify yourself that it's just a movie. You like the the actor? I, I, I like I like the way Lawrence Fishburne okay, played the role. Okay, so it's all about Lawrence. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. You, you had role. me worried. I thought Ike Turner was a role model of yours. I now I was about to say I see why you. That would have been a problem. You know. That oh huh oh huh? huh? no I'm asking. What? He's not a role model. You just... Is he a role model? Nobody heard that Mike model? Slug? Yeah. Nobody, nobody heard that Mike Slug? Hey, I was trying was to gone. deflect it. Bro, it nobody gone. heard that Slug? It. it was really sitting there. I was trying yeah, it was, to... Nah, it was, no, it was, it was parked. Bang, bang, got it was parked. <laughs> I can't with y'all. Pause. Wait. What, Mike, I just want to know what you, what you wearing, bro. Because this tie is on don't point. Don't ask that man. That I just... Man. it's it's. I just want to be. Please don't ask. ask I'm curious, so, man. Since you asked, I've got a lot of right here. Ask what? This tie, bro. And we are five rakish. Mm, look it up. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Look, look up rakish. Cigar smoke blowing, whiskey drinking. Woo! Man, yeah. And gentlemen, you man, know what I'm saying? Didn't, we didn't know what rakish meant the first time. You but said. I had to look Google it. Up. I, still don't, Google? I, I still, still don't, don't know what it means. I just say it's just sharp. I was. I was. I just agree with it when you. I was like when he said rakish. I was like we're not in fall yet. Why we using rakes? Why we rakish? I can dig it. But of course, what I have on Franklin and Anthony. You know how I do. They made fun of me earlier because they say I always, you know, rep my what I wear. But of course, it's Franklin and Anthony. I wasn't making fun of you. I was repeating what you said. Okay, you're right. Every time. But repeat it again. What I say. <laughs> what I'm say Let's it. go ask. What I'm wearing. Ask for Franklin and Anthony. Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> On the inside, it says Mike T. The Gent. <laughs> you better look at this paisley, boy. <laughs> and you know it got to have your name on it. Your name. <laughs> you name in it. So you know it's real. Look at yeah. this. Look at this. Put your name. Hey, look, 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 look. You know look at this. Look, look. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Look, look, something, man. But we are gonna move on, man. We are gonna jump into this topic, fellas. All right, what's the topic? What's what are we the talking topic? about tonight? Today we are talking mental health and stability. Ooh, mm. let's go mental health. We go from being goofy to something very serious, fellas. So everybody needs. Um, everybody needs mental health. Wait, you definitely and mental do. wellness. Mental wellness is very important, man. And I didn't. I have to be honest, I didn't realize how important it was or how serious people took it until recently. And I felt like it's just jumped on the radar probably within the last few years. This is one of the things that I would have to say that I love social media for right Mm now. A lot of things social media, I feel like, has has kind of hindered and hurt our society. But the awareness that people put out there on mental health and mental stability on social social media has been great. What are your thoughts on on mental health and me- mental awareness, fellas? I mental think, stability. I'll say I'll start it off and definitely coming from 
um, African-American community, we don't really talk about a lot of things. We don't have the opportunity, the time, the focus on the things that matter the most. Of course, it's family, faith, and food for the most part. But I think mental well wellness is a huge part of that. I mean, from coming from an urban neighborhood, uh, it was a lot of things that were triggered against me and my family and my color and my skin tone about not being able to succeed or thrive or really progress in the world. And therefore, we had to work harder. Therefore, we had to go through hurdles and all these other things. And when it comes to accomplishing those goals and overcoming those boundaries and obstacles, you got to work hard. You got to you can't play that much. And if you do, they say work hard, play harder. Well, all I'm doing is working. I was working. And I think when you work so hard and put so much energy and effort into what you're trying to do, you become ill. And whether it's physically ill, whether it's, you know, spiritually ill, you forget the things that truly matter. Um, and now, I mean, I honestly take the time that I need to get my mind right. Just like we take mm-hmm. the, our time to get our body right when it comes to exercising or, or eating right. Just like we go to church or, or the temple when we need to get our spirituality in check. Sometimes you just got to exit. Or sometimes you got to put your mind on the right things. So um, a few things that I do when it comes to mental health is just relax i really i'll pray i'll turn off my phone i won't answer text messages or anything on social and i'll just kind of exit myself it's uh, good to unplug it's, it's yeah, very good to unplug, unplug. Uh, that's to. necessary especially in this oversaturated technology yeah, yeah we have so absolutely. much coming at us phones blowing up emails coming left to right people calling it's so many ways for people to get in touch with us and we feel like we're constantly plugged in um but it takes it takes a lot to get unplugged, but I promise you, every time I do it, it's just like, I mean, a, a rush of just calmness coming through my so body. Least, yeah. yeah. I think this ties into a, the, the subject that we talked about before with masculinity, especially talking about mental health. A lot of time it's perceived as a weakness, and men don't like to be perceived as weak. You know, we, we want to project ourselves as very stoic, very strong, and we've got we've got the things pulled together, but... When you don't have anybody in your corner, you feel like you have to prove yourself to everyone else. But when you've got those few men and brothers, you know, taking it a little bit further, you've got those brothers that you can admit to them, like, I'm, I'm weak. There's something going on with me. I think it takes more of a man to admit that he's weak and that he doesn't have the answers to everything. Uh-huh. And he's, uh-huh. he's seeking for that answer. And so it's never a bad idea to reach out with uh, someone that rec- we recently lost was... Um, he, he was he was a rock singer. I can't exactly remember his name right now, um, but he he committed suicide a, probably about six months ago, and his wife posted a picture of him. They were on a family retreat, and he was smiling. He was with his kids. Everything was great. And she said in the subtitle it was like two or three days later. That's when he had committed suicide. Uh-huh. She said those thoughts were in his mind at that time. Uh-huh. You never know when it's going to happen. So even if someone has a smile, even when someone has those. When it appears that they're okay, they still may not be okay. And so that's why, you know, you've got to go up to your bro periodically like, bro, you good? Yeah. And sometimes you, you're like, yeah, I'm good, man. Not like, really, are, are you good? You, you know, you've got to move past the facade. You've got to, you've got to be vulnerable um, uh-huh. and you've got, to be, you've got to be sensitive to others and, and also to yourself because, you know, we, we have those, those different needs. Yeah. What do you do to relax? I'll ask that. For me, music is a, is a big place for me to stress um, to de-stress and just kind of um, unplug from everything. And, and a big thing also as well is, is laughter. And the biggest place that I find that is around my family. Mm-hmm. And so you had asked earlier, uh, you know, what do we do this week? And I was with my family. Uh, I was going to come back Saturday night, but I stayed until <coughs> Sunday afternoon because I was just, I was loving every second of it. I didn't want it to end, but I needed to, you know, like I said, needed to come back. And so being around family and just being around those people who, you can laugh with and really bond with. So music and family. For That's me. real. That's real. I had a few people on the, on the live. People say bubble bath. Uh, one says she bakes or cooks. I can't uh, cook. Another one. You can't. You can't cook, bro. I can't cook at all. You want somebody you to cook, cook for you? Please teach me. <laughs> no ramen. Can you do ramen? I'll grab a lighter and I'll grab a pot. We'll go to work. A lighter. A lighter. <laughs> Not a regular lighter, like the long ones. Bro, you be, what you, you, you know be, what I'm saying? Cooking baked beans? What you they're camp, they're you, camping? You, there's, a thing, there's a thing called a <laughs> stove. stove. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. So nah. You're just sitting there holding the lighter yeah. over your water to yeah. heat it up? Yeah. It worked. It so you have. <laughs> yeah, of course it works. Why does it look like you dead serious? Because <laughs> he dead serious. Just playing. <laughs> Dang. Can we serious. get back to the topic? Well, you won an award for that one. Because you know, we face was, 
I'm weak. Uh-oh, that's number I mean, one week. Number one. That's the number <laughs> one. That's the first week. You know, I had somebody said that they actually detox, and not a physical detox, but a mental one. Like that's cutting, real. Cutting out toxic things that don't contribute positively to my that's life. That's good. Like, yeah. That's, that's deep. That could be people. That yeah. could be liquor. That could be music. That could be work. Yeah. That could be a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I did have a friend ask, how many of you guys try meditation? Personally, for me, I don't meditate. I don't meditate. Does anybody else? I me- I me- my meditation yeah. is Let's my poetry. Let's go with the meditation. No. Yeah, my meditation pretty much is my poetry. I, like, turn all the lights off, yeah. have some music playing, and then I just sit, think, and I write. So um, I say, like, with, ment- with mental health, I think it's a very big issue. One, just being a m- male is the main thing. Like, I think... We talked about it again in the masculinity. Like we've all, we're always taught to be tough, you know, kind of deal things, deal with things, harbor emotions internally. Um, I think like I can go back to my life, probably about 2000, 2012-ish, just a lot of stuff going on with family to where, you know, my, 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 my way of getting away from everything was working out. Mm. Like that, that's what I just did. I just worked out. That was kind of like my release now, like, Years later, it's still working out. It's writing poetry. It's hopping on the grill to barbecue. Like those are like my calming things. It's kind of like put my mind at ease. But I think the thing that um, like what Brian touched on, it's about having that circle, uh, a circle of friends that you can talk to. Like I think as guys, and that's one thing I I commend with with females. Like they're able to talk to their friends that's right. a lot yeah. more and have yeah. girl talk versus. With guys, unless it's like just that one specific person, or even just like with my guys from college, like I'm close, like to where they're my brothers, I can have a conversation with them for like 30 minutes, 45 mm-hmm. minutes, hour on the phone, just talking about like life, life and different things. And I think that's the thing that as men we have to get around is like you can open up yourself to another man and express yourself to them mm-hmm. about stuff that's going on mm-hmm. instead of like holding stuff holding stuff in, letting it build up. Because I mean, if you look at yes, women commit suicide as well, but mm-hmm. the rates for men committing suicide is probably a lot higher. Now I don't know the number specifically, but right. just based off what yep. you always hear, is most of the time it's a man committing suicide. And that's one thing I do respect about women is that they have friends and they have that girl talk, that waiting to exhale moment. They get everything out and express themselves. And I think as men, we have to be able to get to that and stop making it just this status quo Mm -hmm. that as guys, we have to be hard all the time and not express how we (laughs) feel. That's real. So Brian asked me, he said, you know, what are those things for me? For for you, I mean, you kind of mentioned them, but how did you find those things that were those meditative, if you will, those, those spots? How did you find those things? I mean, working out, well, 2012, I graduated from college. So, I mean, my whole life, I mean, dealing with stuff, basketball was always my release, like playing games, practice. I really didn't think about anything going on outside of that. So after basketball was over, all I had was – working out at that time. I mean, I had grad school, but that's school. So working out was like my release. And then as I got older, <clears throat> I mean, like I said, hopping on the grill, writing those were my releases. So it's just one of those, th- I say it's the things where that takes your mind off stuff. Like, you know, most of you guys are closed ears. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, measuring clients, interacting with clients, or being in your shops, you know, coordinating your fabrics and your suits, that's probably like your release from everything. Because at that time, you really focused is. into really is. You yep. focus into your craft at that time. Mm-hmm. So it's like your time where you can get away from everything that's kind of going on. So I think a lot of our releases are just like everyday things that we enjoy doing that kind of like take our minds off of kind of stressful situations that mm-hmm. we go through. Let me ask you that something real quick because you're, you're mentioning like things you like to do. Is that, do you think that's a true release or just something for you to escape for the moment? Mm. I think it can be both. Like, I really feel like with me, especially from a sports standpoint, and, I mean, you play football, so, like, football can be an escape and a release. Definitely. Because, Mm. yeah, you get to hit people. So, a lot of anger that you're getting (laughs) off, you can do that. Basketball is the same way. Like, mm-hmm. what you might be mad at, you take it out on the person that's guarding you. Mm-hmm. What you might be mad at as far as, like, working out, like, it just pushes you to go in the weight room 
a little bit harder, so you kind of exhaust yourself. So it can be both an escape and a release of maybe like some built up anger or emotions or stress that you that you might be going through. Definitely. Sure. And I I would say for me, uh, I would agree with you. I know working out is probably like one of the biggest one of the biggest ways to release to me that I've probably experienced. Like you got a lot on your mind. That's probably some of the times I've gone the hardest in the gym. Not on cardio, as you can tell. I got this belt. <laughs> but uh, just, just hey, going on. You should see Mike jump rope. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> I'm <ever>. weak. <laughs> Follow Mike the gent. I'm weak. No, but yeah, just, just hopping on the weights, man. I, uh, <laughs> y'all boys he tripping. Cowboy. I'm trying to be serious, man. Yeah, he is weak two times. But yep. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to, no, but seriously, man, that's like one of the biggest releases, man, just going in there pounding weights, just – just anything to kind of take off, take your mind off it, man. And one of the biggest things that that I like to do, and and it sounds so cliche, and it's definitely one of the things you hear in the black community is how just go to church, yeah. right? But for me, growing up in the church, that's always been a huge release. Mm-hmm. Has been, man, I I can't wait to get on to get up there be involved in service, get a great word that just feeds my soul and and helps me, you know, carries me out through the week. I love to be able to go up there, be on the praise team, lead praise and worship or whatever, man, or just just be amongst, you know, the people of God. That helps me so much like with with stuff that I'm dealing with, stuff that I'm thinking about and and it helps me block out and just be be able to be one-on-one with God and commune with God in that moment. So, uh I got to quick question yes so your your situation is different than than us four because you know again you're 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 married mm-hmm. and so it, it's different because it doesn't just affect you it affects your family and see, well. I was, so I was, that's crazy because i was going to ask you guys that and and not to discredit where y'all are in life or uh, talk down on where you're in life i feel like it is a little bit harder on either a married man or a man with children because you're responsible for more than just yourself. Yeah, that's real. And so dealing with, exactly. So dealing with that, the pressures of being a provider, uh, the pressures of making the right decisions, Mm -hmm. not only for, like you said, for yourself, but for the whole household. Mm -hmm. If I make Mm -hmm. one wrong decision, it could affect everything in this house and every person in this house. So man, that's a lot of pressure. And so for me, uh, another thing that I do too, man, is I, I stay up late, right? Same. So when family goes to sleep, that's the time that I I get to I get to be by myself, think and process things, right? So things that happen throughout the day or things that could occur the next day or doing throughout the week, that's the time that I'm thinking and trying to trying to plan, process everything, and make sure I'm sharp, make sure I'm. You know, making the right decisions for myself. That's when I'm talking to God. You know, and 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 just trying to be ahead of the game, man. So yeah, I, I it definitely I feel like it plays a huge part being married and and having kids. Just because it's more, there's just more added stress. Now, let me say this: it is more added, but I I love love my family. Yeah, wouldn't trade it for the world. So, but what is something that and and I want to get? Oh no no no! Yeah, I go less as a. As a married man, what is something that you and your wife do to fight that together? What, whether if she's struggling with something like that or if mm-hmm. you are, you know, without getting too personal, it's but like, you know, what, is, what is something that you Definitely being able question? to talk to each other and, and confide in one another. So one of the things that, and it's definitely more her <laughs> than me, because, you know, like we said earlier, that it's that thing about being a male. We don't, we share a little bit, but we don't like to share everything or share too much, so uh, I mean, she comes to me and she shares, she tells me how she feels and, and vice versa. I've learned that, you know, as I've gone on that like, Hey, that's, that's my wife. This, this is my friend for real. Like right. that's my best friend for yeah, real. So your best friend, exactly. Uh-huh. So I can tell her this and, for better, for and, worse, and, it, and, and it stay here. It's not going anywhere. And so that, that's definitely helped me as well too. So that's real. Yeah. yeah. I want to, um, I'll, I'll go last. I want to, provide a different perspective from you guys in the regard of having a release so first and foremost let me just say i think the scariest part about mental health and wellness uh, well-being is the fact that 
it's hidden very easily mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah. um that's that's the scariest part about depression is that sometimes you can't see it the the, the 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 red flags may be there but we miss them um i just had a friend commit suicide last week um they actually hung themselves and literally one of the happiest people i knew but was having relationship issues right and you know when you go back on their timelines and you go through some of their posts and you read through some of their text you see the red flags but in the moment we overlook them right mm-hmm. and so i think the i think the scariest part about depression is that oftentimes it's hidden now the the, the perspective that i want to provide is from someone that doesn't necessarily have a release right mm-hmm. um i'm somebody that i would consider a workaholic and i really do work you know people ask me what i do in my free time and i tell them work when i'm not working i'm sleep right so i don't necessarily have a social life and because of that, I burn out very quickly. Right. I burn out very quickly. Um, I'll, I'll be completely transparent and say that sometimes I battle with self-doubt. I battle with insecurities. I battle with um, comparison. I battle with feelings of um, being inadequate, right? Um, and I don't do anything about it. You know, I don't go to the gym and work out. I don't listen to music. I literally just sit there with my thoughts. And I know that there's a lot of other people out there, too. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm depressed and I'm stressed out and I'm anxious and I'm blah, blah, blah. I don't have a release. All I do is just chill at the crib. I seclude myself. I isolate myself when I'm depressed. I don't I don't I don't talk to anybody about it at all. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing, but not everyone has a release like basketball, has a release like music, has a release like spending time with family, right? Mm-hmm. Th- those are some luxuries that some people just don't have. Right. So, and I'm and I'm not saying that's a good thing. I will say the only the only thing that has helped has been friends. Like my friends have gotten me through everything. So just reiterating that point. Oh yeah, just reiterating that point. Like. Like when my friends call me and they have problems, they have issues, I'll literally just tell them to vent. And not because I'm looking to give advice or not because I'm looking to give a response. Sometimes you just got to get it out. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody always looking for advice. Like sometimes people just need to get it out. That is the release. That is the stress reliever. Right. Sometimes just having a conversation about it makes you feel better. And puts things in perspective um so again it's already been mentioned but check on your friends Mm -hmm. check on your friends because you never know legit can i i'm not can i here we go so (laughs) come on uh (laughs) bugger up um so jacob and and we've we've all talked about this too but you're you said yourself you're a believer in christ you follow god 100 percent. so the story of god and the story of jesus is manifested through Jesus, God came down, just beautiful and holy as he is, came down and into flesh. And when he came down, we had a debt that we couldn't pay, so there was a lot of weight on us. And he knew that we couldn't pay that. And so he came in and he took that for us. All we have to do is accept it. Mm-hmm. So when we've got something coming in, it's not about, God, give me the strength to ca- take care of it. It's, God, I'm, I'm going to mess it up. I need to give this up to you. And so I, I want to encourage you not, not to preach at you. No, for real. I'm, I'm talking to a mirror. Mm-hmm. But whenever the, those times come, you look at what Jesus did. He died on the cross. People said, like, where's your Savior now? And he's like, three days later, wait. Mm-hmm. Just, just yeah. watch. How long? Yeah. And then he came back, and, he, and he, he wrecked it. And so if he did that for your sins, these, these things that are going on that you know, are, are very serious, he, he did that with you in mind. Now, the whole Bible isn't about specifically you. It's not about specifically me. It's about God's glory being manifested, and he is stronger than the stuff that we have to go through. And so when he looks at you, he sees you as value. He sees you with his identity. He no longer sees you as depressed. He no longer sees you as just a guy who is hounding around just trying to get women to make himself feel better about himself. Mm-hmm. That's not who he sees you as. He's mm-hmm. like, you know what? He professes the, the name of Jesus Christ on his lips. That's my, that's my boy. That's my son. Mm-hmm. But when you don't go back to your dad... How can dad help you? 100%. Because for me, whenever I'm jacked up, first call, dad, uh, I, I done screwed up. I, I need you. But if you don't get on that lifeline, because there's no 
priest that you have to go to anymore to to get to God. It's directly God, Jesus. I need I need you. That's mm-hmm. when you get on your knees. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. It's when let me, he makes you stand up. And let me add to that too. And 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 you're talking about God and of course the Bible. And you know I am I do I read my Bible, stay in it. And one of the you know one of the scriptures says that cast your cares on Him because He cares for you. And so what that's saying is you're able to take everything that you have, everything that you're facing. And I don't mean to turn this into, you know, a religious discussion, but uh, when dealing with mental, it, you know, you can't help but tie into, you know, spirituality. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's one of the things. That, exactly. Definitely. That's one of the things that I'm strong on is my faith. And so um, that's why going to church and being able to commune with God is one of the biggest releases when I'm up by myself and I'm, I'm talking to him. And that's why it's a huge release, you know, because I said, like I said, the scripture says, cast your cares on him because he cares for us. And so I would encourage you, you know what I'm saying, when you're looking for something to do, when your friends don't answer the phone. Mm-hmm. You oh, yeah. Know what I'm saying? Oh, no, that's you the know, only thing that works. You go, you yeah. be sure, and you talk to, you make sure you're talking to God. Man. That's the only so, thing that works. It's a big got, thing, got a, a big thing that has helped for I me. I got a so. question with that. Yes. And for some of those who may be non believers out there, um, my question is to them, or if anybody may have an answer, what do you think about counseling or seeking therapeutic help? Um, in a sense, if you don't have a friend to go to, if you are, uh, if you don't really believe in the church or the, or the, the temple of God, like, would you or should they consider some type of help, like counseling? But I think that's uh, another, especially in the black household. Right, right, like right. Like counseling or going to therapists, like <laughs> that's <laughs> real. Then, yeah. then you got to worry about your family. Like, oh, he crazy. You got to go to psychiatrist. Right. And so I feel like, well, with the black with the black family, a lot of stuff is always swept under a rug and issues are never dealt with mm-hmm. because going to seek help or seek counseling has such a negative connotation. connotation. Yes, like sir. you you are you get this crazy label or this unsta- unstable label when mm-hmm. it's a lot of people in your family. Like you got an auntie that's unstable now and it's crazy as hell now mm-hmm. and she won't admit it, but everybody, everybody sees that she crazy. crazy. And so I think that that's the thing that people just have to get around um, uh, again, specifically with the black families, because I that, that, and that's one thing I will say about white families. Yeah, yeah, I will take y'all kids to a therapist <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick. I will. Little, five, Tommy, yeah. Tommy, little Listen. Tommy gonna have counseling at seven Johnny years right. old. We gotta take him to somebody. Like look, he gonna have counseling at seven, right? Versus you can be twenty seven <laughs> for us. We for us, and you still take a nap. Going. <laughs> you go still ain't going better sleep it off. So I just think <laughs> from from a, from a black standpoint, black family standpoint, we have to get around the connotation that counseling or therapy yeah. means crazy because married people go to marriage counseling. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. They're or not crazy. you have veterans yeah. that come back from the war and they go to counseling right. for. So I think I think we have to like life. Life is a counseling session. Like there's a lot of things that you see in life or go through in life that you can't understand. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to vent those things out to someone and hopefully they can kind of break it down or even just be an ear to listen. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's still counseling. Counseling doesn't always have to be advice. It can just be mm-hmm. listening, Inventing, somebody like listening to what you have to say and kind of asking you questions on why you feel this way, why you feel that way, mm-hmm. and you just getting everything out. So I, I think that's that's to answer your question. I think that's one thing that yeah, counseling has to stop having this negative connotation around. So it's cha- it, you're saying changing the changing the definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fully agree with that. And I had uh, I had somebody just say this too. Well, as as black people, we don't want everybody knowing our business. Yeah. That's but, true. But I'm like, well, in my mind, because mama tell, tell my, you in the car, I'm don't tell, tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Business. Well, I'm not gonna tell my mama nothing. Um, well, at, at that point, I wouldn't. But I'm like, I talk to my mama. Every week now, like just to catch up and follow up on her, and she follows up on me. But when it comes to some family members, which we all have, you can't talk to them because mm-hmm. your business is gonna be in the streets, in the right. office, in the temple, hundred percent, in the church, hundred percent. And so at that point, if you were to have nobody, if you mm-hmm. don't have friends, if you don't have a temple, where would you go? And I think a therapist or a counselor is that person because you know your inf- information is secret. You know that yeah. they're under law, they're under a license, and if they're willing to give you the time of day and not share your information. I think that's the perfect place to go, an event. And there's a difference, too, between 
asking for help and crying for attention. Yeah. Because a lot of people will put on the mm. hashtag, you know, the hashtag depressed or I'm so sad. Did you, hey, did you hear? Did, did, are you paying attention? Oh, okay. But I'm so, are you looking at me now? There's yeah. this yeah. constant mindset of just trying to get attention. And that's, that's where the mindset is. And there's a difference between, you know, that and I'm not okay. And I need some help because I don't want to be like this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as an example, uh, last, uh, last, uh, last time we talked, we were talking about cuffing season. I did learn it wasn't about putting cuffs on your trousers. Great job. And great job. I learned. I love <laughs> boy. Great episode. And, uh, thank Check you. it out. Yeah, thank go, you, go look at it. And uh, I, I had talked about a, a relationship that I had with the, with the young lady, and that was the first time that I had truly experienced depression because uh, she said no to me and very quickly to an, another, another gentleman really quickly, and that hurt because she looked at me and she said, not you this other person hey, and that bro. always hurts to be chosen hey, man, ladies be putting you in some dark times bro. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, 90 I, I remember, 90 percent of the I time i remember in college bro my my my, my girl in college i i closed my door turned all the lights off wait what was it had like? music playing under my covers where's, laying down bro. Where's this going? he was, was playing chris brown was this the wait on I? Hey, women, women will put you in a dark, dark place. <laughs> that's real. Boy. Like real, like that's real. Press. No, that's real. Yeah, it'll, that's be, real. it'll be painful. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we all done been mm. in pain. So, <laughs> what, 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 what was this? <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing a sundress. <laughs> so, 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 so. But what I wanted to get at was, so I was at a really low point, and I have, um, so I believe in self de- self defense. So I do have a shotgun. Mm-hmm. And there was Whoa, one point where I just got to chill, like Austin. Austin. Yeah. You, you, just going you gotta chill, Austin. We in Texas, y'all. Yeah, so I mean, since Dallas. So I looked at it and I was thinking some <laughs> some pretty bodies. dark stuff. <laughs> and it got to the point where I told my roommate, I said, "Man, this is what I'm going through." And I said, "I don't feel comfortable with this gun mm-hmm. in my room loaded." Mm-hmm. And he he said, "Okay, well, I I appreciate that. You know, you would, you would tell me that." Yeah, and yeah. he he he's not a friend. He's not a roommate. He's a brother. He's somebody that I would jump in front of a bullet for. And before I went to bed, he came in. He goes, Austin, where's your shotgun? And I said, it's right over there. He goes, I need you to unload it for me. Mm-hmm. So I got my shotgun, opened it up, pulled out all the shells, and it's been empty to this day hmm. ever since awesome. then. And I, I didn't want there to be a temptation because I got to some low points. Mm-hmm. But I, was, I, I wanted to be sensitive enough to tell him that I was weak and I needed help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he took the shells. I don't know what he did with them. But, um, and, and, and I say that as um, a crisis was averted. I, I don't know what could have happened. But I, I, personally, I'm glad that I went through that uncomfortable situation and said, listen, I'm not okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I need you to take out the ingredients right now. So, I mean, I say that as a, um, a word of encouragement to anyone who's listening and thinking about those thoughts your life is way too valuable for that yeah i mean you were here for a purpose you you've yep. got something it, it's hard to see it's hard but life is just gonna hit you you just gotta hit it back mm-hmm. and then when it knocks you down you stand back up if it knocks you down six times you you get up seven and if you have never prayed before just start praying because you still have lungs because you still have breath in those lungs you've got a purpose okay. yeah one of my um one of my friends said that um suicide was a selfish act because it doesn't just affect you it affects everyone Everybody. around you Everybody. it affects everyone around you it is and um I, I i think that you really have to pay attention to who you vent to not from the perspective that they're going to tell your business but from the perspective um that sometimes we transfer our feelings and our emotions and our energy, our vibes Mm -hmm. onto those around us. And that's an issue too. I I, I know everybody has that friend that each and every time they call you, they complain it every single time. They always talking about this and they always talking about that. And they always complaining about this. I stopped answering those calls. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you really have to pay attention to the energy that you're giving other people is, which is why you should do it with a professional. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you have to bring a third party in to give an unbiased opinion. You know, sometimes friends and family members aren't going to give you the advice that you need to get through a particular circumstance or situation. And I'll add to that too. I feel like not everyone, uh, 
and you might think they're friends at that moment, not everyone mm. has your best interests at heart. Yep. And mm, mm, mm. and not Oof, only that, but you don't clothing. you yeah. don't know exactly. Not only that, but you don't know what they're dealing with them their, themselves. And like you said, there's a transfer of energy, vibes, everything, what have you, spirits, That's real. demons, yeah. whatever. That's real. And so we all got them. you don't exactly you don't know what they're going through themselves. And so you going to talk to everybody? I would say is I don't think it's a good idea. But it's always good to have that one person that you know you can go to, confide in. And if that isn't a friend, and then... And they got some rationale to them. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. But, that, but that person that's going to tell you right or wrong, they're not just going to side with you just because, you know, y'all cool, y'all friends or whatever. But have that person, you know, that, that's going to tell you, you know, right from wrong. And so for me, too, going back to the family or how me and my wife help each other, that's one of the things. Like if I know anybody gonna tell me the truth, <laughs> that's real. It's that's gonna real. be her. Yeah. That's real. It's gonna be Christine Taylor. She's gonna tell me the truth, whether I want to hear it or not. You got to be strong and enough so, to admit that you're not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So I would definitely say, man, having that having that person in your life, you know what I'm saying? That that's gonna always keep it as we like to say, keep it hundred with you. 100. Keep it a bug with you. I think that's the problem, though. What's like in this day and time, nobody wants. Like, I think everybody, no, I won't say everybody. I think a lot of people want people that are going to agree with every move they make True. and not be absolutely honest with them. Like, everybody it's wants realistic. yes. Because it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uncomfortable. No, nobody wants to be told, like, yeah, yeah you, this is stupid what you're doing. Or, yeah. like, yeah, you you shouldn't be acting like this. Or, yeah, you, like, with me, one thing I appreciate about my, my friends back home, and especially my two of my best friends are, are like females. And like one thing I respect about them is that they always keep 100 with me. They say, yo, KJ, you tripping or you, know, you doing this. And, and, and I laugh because women don't have a problem telling you. Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. They don't have a problem telling each other. They're the real ones. And that's ah, nothing, nothing the against them. I thank them for that. For yeah. Our, a lot of women are, are can be brutally honest. And, they like and kids. Like I said, they don't. You know, you might not like it at first, but you're better for it in the long run. You know, mm -hmm. and so one of the things too I want to touch on that I find is is kind of crazy, is that um, we share so much on social media, right? But we won't share. Uh, Share certain things with you know what I mean yeah. with each other that we that we're dealing with. I, I find that kind of strange. Do y'all think that's weird? That I, th I, th I think it's weird when people say I'm going on a social media break. Like I'm like just you just on social media. Ju just just <laughs> just let y'all know. Yeah, just just, <laughs> just, just like just look, let, I, I look, feel like everybody wants like a, just let, I won't be on here. I'm like just go on your break. Yeah, like I'm, you don't I'm, need I'm, to make an announcement. I'm about it. For look, the next I also year. see that as real. a potential message. Maybe not a cry, but just a potential message. I mean, sometimes it's for they attention. They want somebody to reach out to. They want some yeah. attention. Yeah. But yeah, and that's the thing, too, that Austin talked about. You have to decipher between whether it's a cry for help or somebody just seeking A cry attention. for attention. Yeah. That's exactly. Right. Exactly. But man, fellas, I know this has been a crazy man, so much kind of a, uh, it's a, a, a deep It's been a good topic, topic though. Good topic. Very, we can, we very go different deep. from, go from what we normally talk about. But man, I hope somebody, if you were... Uh, yourself dealing with depression I hope you were uh, Helped by this subject yeah. Or um, At least Want to reach out To somebody Man I wish we had A number or something That we could I know there's tons Of websites and numbers That you can Reach out to If you're dealing With depression Or, or mental Or unstable uh, Mentally man But um, You know Feel free to reach out To us I know these fellas yeah. Wouldn't yeah. mind Easy. You know mm -hmm. Talking to somebody Or you know If you have questions Or anything man you know, feel free to reach out to us. All of us are on Instagram, fellas. Go ahead and give your Instagram out real quick. All right, man. I'm Mr. Milage, M I S T E R underscore M I L L A G E. You can catch me on IG at Image Ambassador, Image underscore Ambassador. And I am Mike T the Gent. That's Mike T underscore the Gent. I am Austin Robertson of Gentleman's Avenue. And real quick, the last thing I wanted to just chime in on this is. Some of the best advice I've ever heard if you need to get some truth from somebody. Truth, like surgery, hurts 
but it cures. Uh. At Gentleman's Avenue. <laughs> Hashtag. Hear that plug. Kevin, tweet. You want to follow up with that? He like, man, hold on. He's looking for quotes right now. <laughs> <laughs> he about to spit a whole poem. He's gonna, <laughs> give, <us a> poem. <laughs> He's gonna give us a poem. Yeah, got jokes. <laughs> uh, but nah, Instagram is uh, Calvin. It's spelled with a K. Uh, so Calvin underscore underscore J. Can you just go ahead and change this to Mr. Two Buttons and get it over with? Mr. Uh, Two baby. Buttons in there. Calvin J, that's the stage name for the pool. That's, that's right. what it's always going That's right. That's what's up. Mr. That's Two Buttons up. is an alien. Yes, that's that's it. Right. <laughs> and again, shout out to our sponsor, Balcones. 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 I want to say thank you to Elevator Relief for uh, hey. providing this beautiful the studio. Jet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. always have a great time in here. And until next time, thank you. Peace. 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 Peace.